Hey, Anthony Tilly here, and welcome to episode 21 of The Solopreneur Show. Welcome to The Solopreneur Show with your host, Anthony Tilly. To get your hands on more great business training and advice, plus the chance to join our free Facebook group where you will see extended guest interviews, the opportunity of free one-to-one coaching and behind-the-scenes access to Anthony, go to www.thesolopreneurshow.com and join us today. And here's your host, the man himself, Mr. Anthony Tilly. Hey, Anthony here, and I hope you're well. Welcome to today's episode. It really is great to have you with me. Now, in today's show, i got a really, really great guy, and we go step by step into a topic, into a subject that I'm really into at the minute, that I'm really enjoying finding more uh, out about, and I'm really excited about going forward for for the show, so for, for what we're doing here. The gentleman I'm going to interview today is a gentleman by the name of Austin Netsley. Now, I've known Austin for for a little while, and he is an absolute top-notch guy when it comes to book launches, but not just book launches, actually making them into six, seven-figure income streams because of what goes on in the background. So it's not just launching that book, it's doing all the key things to ensure that, yes, the book is a success on the front end, but that you make some really big bucks on the back end as well. So I'm really, really excited for you to hear this. Austin's a great guy. Uh, He's helped me a lot uh, in the past and really looking forward to you seeing this. So I think let's just uh, let's just roll the tape and uh, and enjoy the interview. Cheers. joined today by uh, Austin Netsley of Epic Launch. Now, Austin is an awesome guy I've known for uh, for a little while, and uh, he's been been super helpful to me with several things with regards to books, etc. So I've got him on the show because when it comes to to launching books and getting people to to help them to write books, etc., Austin really is the man. So Austin, how are you doing? It's great to have you with us. I am doing excellent, Anthony. It's an honor and pleasure to be here, and I appreciate you having me on, my friend. No problem at all. No problem at all. It's uh, we were just saying before the call. It's too long since we've since we've spoken, so it's, uh, it's great to see you again. Okay, Austin. Um, as I as I sort of said, uh, you know, when we were we were talking, you making you aware of how uh, how we do things here, and uh, you know, I, I like to pin the guest down to start to to really sort of give the give the backstory. So everybody can can get encouragement no matter what stage of their their career they are um they they can hear sort of different people's uh, angles and where they've come from so if you want to uh, if you want to give us your bio that would be absolutely wonderful sure so i started out at 18 i kind of had it all figured out anthony i was going to uh basically what i want to do was be the ceo of a large company so the way i was going to do that was get my engineering degree just like my dad did get my mba get my uh, get some sales experience and that was like my trio to work up the ladder and everybody in my life was in the corporate world that's the only thing i knew i couldn't name probably two people that were entrepreneurs in the small town that i grew up in and so i had it all figured out i went down the, the exact path that i thought i was going to go down i went and started working for a big oil company as an engineer and a couple years in I learned that, you know, that's probably not what I want to do for the rest of my life. I learned that I wasn't jealous of any of the executives, the people that I uh, thought I wanted to be. And when I realized that, I started to look at other opportunities. And one of my bosses introduced me to books. And for the first time in my life, I I, I started to read some books outside of uh, the classroom, right? And that just opened my eyes to this whole new world. It opened my eyes to uh, the fact that I could control my own destiny, that I could make X million dollars, that I could do this, that, and the other, travel the world, and and all these amazing things that I just never knew about before, that they don't teach you in typical society. So once that seed was planted, it was just a matter of time. And eventually, I started my own uh, business on the side at the first First business was an investing business where I was day trading. Uh, I was in sales, so I had a little bit of flexibility, but I built that business up 
and uh, had some really good success with it. After a lot of failures, there was a lot of failures in there, uh, but eventually I built that up on the side where I was starting to make more money by pressing an on and off button with my algorithm than I was by working full time. So that was kind of the first signal that, all right, well, it's probably time to leave the corporate world. But even then, I had so much fear from leaving just because I grew up like the corporate world was the only thing I knew, like I said. So once I started making some good money on the side, it still took me two years before I finally quit the corporate world and left off on my own. And it was kind of my quarter life crisis, if you will. I was 27. So I traveled around the world for 18 months and just wanted to, to see the world and wanted some complete freedom, which is I think what we're all really going after anyway. Um, and as I got started traveling, it was all awesome. But at the same time, I needed that challenge and I needed that creative outlet. So I started a blog and podcast. And then one thing led to the next. And I was trying to build this online business. I, was, uh, I joined a mastermind and I was seeing some people have some awesome success. And I was kind of jealous of their success that they were having. And they were just getting a lot of traction really quickly. They were making a lot of money. And I had tried to uh, build this online business. At first, I wasn't too serious about it, so I can't be too angry. But after a while, I started to put in a lot of hours into this new online brand and business. And in nine months, Anthony, I made $2,200, which I bro if I broke down my hourly wage, it was like $1. $1.57 per hour, which is illegal to pay somebody that little. So here I am. I left this corporate, uh, this juicy gig. I was on the fast track. I started this first business and I put it on hold to travel. And now I started this online business because I was so passionate about sharing uh, these topics of money and the mindset. So it was just a passion project that turned into uh, a, a business, but it was really a hobby. But I was failing and I was failing hard and I was seeing everybody around me just grow so much faster. And I started to put in the work and I was like, like I, I had by traveling, I had rested and got the, the juices back going. And I was like ready to, to work on my next business. And I had started, but I just wasn't making any money. And I came out with this program. I thought this program, this is going to be it. There's this major wave of online programs. This is going to change the game. I thought from a, a, the, the worst case scenario, I was going to sell 25 units of that program because it was at a crazy price. I sold four. And at this point in time, the major doubts were in my life. Do I have to go back to the corporate world eventually? Do I, did I make the wrong decision? Did I, should I have done this? Should I have done that? Like I, was, I just felt like a failure. I actually called each one of the four people that purchased that program. And I think I sold it for like $397 or something like that. And I said, hey, I'm sorry. We didn't have enough people buy. I'm going to give you your money back and I'm going to send you a couple other bonuses. So that's kind of a, a period of, uh, let's call it seven years from graduating college to engineering to investing, to freedom and retirement, to starting my first online business and absolutely failing. And at that point in time, I had to go back to the drawing board and that's where uh, the rest of my life took off, which is what we'll talk about here today. So I hope that catches you up to the first part of it. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's interesting, a couple of, couple of things there. Um, as you were saying about you know just selling the, the four units, we, we again just sort of reference back to what we were saying earlier. Was I was saying I, I read in uh, Ready Fire Aim recently, mm. and there's a piece in it where Michael Masterson says I've never worked with a company who hasn't been disappointed with with their <laughs> launch. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we all do, don't we? We all think it's going to like you know you, you've got these massive massive expectations, and um, you know if it just doesn't quite come off, it's it's just gutting, isn't it? It is. It is. And the thing is, at first, most people don't expect that, right? And that's what stops them. And then they do as I did, where they throw in the towel and stop and quit. But here's the literal path of a million dollar product. And we're jumping ahead a little bit, but this is important stuff. And I'm glad you brought it up is even after we have quote unquote, figured it all out, even after we've moved nearly 2 million books all throughout the world, when we came out with a product launch last year, we still had some major, major hiccups. And we hit basically if our, if our target was like $500,000 in, in this launch, we did like 160 K or something. That's 32% of our goal. 
that's not really that good. Now we had some some major website issues and some other things happen, but nonetheless, that's after we figured it out. But here's how we turned it into a million dollar product. We brought people in in that first round, we vetted the program, we improved it, we really got some great feedback, we got some great case studies and testimonials, we went back to the drawing board to improve the marketing, to hone in everything, we launched it again and again and again, and voila, that major failure is now a seven figure per year product for us, right? So that's that's that was the major thing is, is at first I would have given up on that, yeah. but now being part of so many different launches, whether it be book launches or product launches, I found exactly what you shared with me is like, uh, the, the, the first one is probably very likely, no matter how much you know, not going to hit your expectations, but that's okay. Make it better and improve it and relaunch it again and again, and that's how you ultimately build something pretty awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I think that's it's obviously you know, there is a massive lesson there for people because it is very. And like I say, you know, we, we've all done it. You know, you do something, you launch something, and you just think, oh, well, obviously that was a crap idea. You know, and I'll throw, I'll throw no. that out and let's start again. And then yep. the next one, it does the same thing. And the next one, you know, you see, well, if you're just stuck with that first thing and, and tweaked and tested and changed and and tried different things, obviously as you've done there, ultimately most of the time or a lot of the time, you know, it will end up getting near to where you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. There's there's two words that have been popping up recently from talking and networking with, with people that have just done amazing things as entrepreneurs. One of those words is productivity, getting more done. Oftentimes, you know what to do, right? We're all doing most of the same things and you can pretty quickly learn what to do. It's just a matter of getting more done in less time, delegating, and doing all these different things that you teach people. But the second thing is what you talked about there, which is perseverance. This word has just shown up so many. I feel like it's it's every week that I'm talking with somebody and they're talking about just persevere. Most people are going to quit. But if you persevere uh, through that that little struggle period, through that dip, as multiple people different uh, call it, um, that's when you're going to break through and ultimately get that momentum. So, yeah, I love it. It's it's, inter- it's interesting. We, um, we went to Vegas before Christmas, um, my wife and I and some friends. And in in the foyer of the Bellagio Hotel, They've they've got this sort of I think they they call it sort of you know, the the summer room or some big room, and it was all set out for Thanksgiving, and it was all mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing, and it was there one day and it looked amazing. You know, you walk in, looks brilliant, looks superb. The next morning we get up for for breakfast. Okay, it's gone, stripped apart, and they're starting for Christmas, and you know this is funny how the marketer's mind works. And, I'm, and as we're going through, and I can see them doing these bits, we were there for another four or five days. And I thought, you know, every time I walk past this, I'm going to take a photograph of it. <laughs> and I took a photograph of it getting better and better and better and better. And, you know, now I use that and I show it to students. I'm like, you see the finished bit there that looks brilliant, that looks amazing? Look at all the hassle and all oh, the work right. that had to go before. Because that's the thing, isn't it? You know, people look on the outside and they only ever see the success and the brilliant, shiny thing that, that sort of comes out at the end. They don't see all the hard work and the slog and the effort that goes in beforehand. That's it. And even if you're told that, it's hard to really grasp it, right? Because you do see those people that are having success or you do see the outlier, right? Uh, that has some some things happen to them pretty quickly. And I've been fortunate to be one of those people. But most of the time I'm not. Most of the time I've been that person that's wondering like how the heck that person did it, right? So. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah it, it, it just it doesn't, always, doesn't always come naturally, does it? It doesn't always come, yeah. doesn't always come first time. So I know you, you got into the, the books really because you – you wrote your own, didn't you? You wrote your own book and then people started asking you, how did you do it? What did you do? That, that's exactly right. So to pick up on the story, so to this point I had failed, right? And I went back to the drawing board. I was, I was looking at different options. What do I do? Do I stop this? Do I go back to the corporate world? Do I pick up the investing again, which I hated the investing business. That's why I didn't continue, even yeah. though it was making me a lot of money. It was stressful as hell. It wasn't worth it. Um, I went back to the drawing board and I started to look at, okay, who am I jealous of? 
Oh, I'm jealous of Tony Robbins and Tim Ferriss and Brendan Burchard and uh, Marie Forleo and, and T. Har Becker and some of these people. What what did they do? What did they do throughout their career? I, you know, I'm still in my 20s. Uh, what really what were some of those career decisions that they made? What strategic steps? What's that fast forward button that I can take? And like as I started to like map out their uh, their careers and what they did and what commonalities they had in my notebook, I realized one of those major things was they had a book. And most people and me prior to this point in time had thought, well, I have to accomplish X, Y, Z, or I have to be famous before I write a book. But that wasn't the case. Even Tony Robbins, even Brendan Burchard, even some of these biggest names in the business will flat out tell you that they use their book as a tool to get them to the next level. Mm. So I knew to get more credibility, to get more of an audience, to get more respect, to get more partnerships, all the things that I desperately needed in my online business. Um, the one of the th- the one thing that I could do to get that was a book, and then so I started to turn my podcast, which is cool that you've got a podcast here and help people with that, uh, into a book. So I created the content once, uh, I did some interviews, and it wasn't my story in the book. It was really uh, the story of those that I interviewed, which was super cool because I didn't feel like I had enough credibility to share my own story. So anyhow, put together my own book. And as I was going through the writing process, I saw this quote from Robert Kiyosaki, who uh, was on your show, which I'm just like super, super uh, proud of you about, which is just amazing. He's a hero to me. Um, He said, it's called best seller, not best writer. And this was really, really eye opening to me because A, I was an engineer. I I knew I was not going to be the best writer. But I figured if I could become a best seller, then that's where I was going to ignite this momentum that I was looking for. That's where I was going to open up the opportunities, give me the credibility. So I really went to work to figure out how, even from a tiny platform, no social media, a small email list of 400 and something people, how can I have this big time success, get my book up to number one on Amazon, open up a lot of opportunities, get some big media uh, and do all that. So I interviewed a bunch of different people, anybody I could to, to pick their brain about how they uh, uh, did with their book, what worked, what didn't. Uh, what things they would suggest for me and on and on and on. And I studied every program that was out there. And I was looking for this bulletproof system that was going to guarantee that uh, I was going to become a bestseller because I knew I was going to be able to potentially leverage that. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find anybody. Even people that were going to charge me ten to fifteen thousand dollars could not guarantee that I was going to hit number one bestseller status. And I thought this was ridiculous uh, because I knew from some people that it was fairly easy to hit number one bestseller status on Amazon. So nonetheless, I put together this full game plan, uh, walked through this process. I started to learn from other industries as well, like what what do blockbuster movies do? What does Apple do with their product launches and on and on? And put together this really detailed uh, process for what I was going to follow to ultimately make a big splash. And I went through with that. And in the first 36 hours, Anthony, uh, I was giving my Kindle version away of my book for free. In the first 36 hours between paperback sales and the Kindle sales, I moved over 32,000 units all throughout the world. And that, and I had an email list again before this of 440 people. So that just changed the game for me overnight. Okay. Now, I was trying to get on Business Insider and Yahoo Finance and uh, uh, Forbes and all these places and didn't get any response. I didn't even get a no. I just got a delete button when I was trying to reach out to them. And instantly, within almost hours of my launch, uh, I started getting requests from these same outlets asking me to be on there, asking me to be a regular contributor, and it just changed the game. My email list exploded. Uh, I was basically everywhere. It was like me and Obama at the time. There was some political stuff going on. It was like me and Obama on the front pages of these things with my interviews. It was crazy. It was like so surreal. And the book just took off. The book stayed at number uh, number one for like 98 straight days uh, in the investing and some other like high competitive categories, which again was crazy because I didn't have any social media. I didn't have any influence. Uh, I just did some different things strategically. And as soon as I, like I was sharing some of my results publicly and that actually helped fuel some of the success after the initial launch. Um, But as soon as I was sharing some of these results and like showing screenshots, hundreds of authors started asking me questions like, how the heck do you do it? Like you're a self-published author with no, so anyhow, by the time I got the 200th question, the entrepreneur in me was like, wow, there seems to be an opportunity here, right? And I was talking to my buddy, uh, not my buddy at the time, uh, his name's Peter Voog, and he was somebody that was on my podcast. 
and he told me about his book idea and he said, I'm traveling and I'm busy, but it looks like you've got this book launch thing figured out. And I said, you know what? I, I feel like we do. Uh, I put in just so much work, like literally probably a thousand hours of work to figure out how to effectively launch and market a book in a different way. Uh, I think we've got something here. So let me test it with your book. So we launched his book, which we was me, my virtual assistant in the Philippines and my buddy who I was helping out because he was going through a rough time. Um, uh, we launched Peter's book and had instantly same, if not better results. We helped him make over $23,000 in royalties in the first month, which royalties don't make any money. Like the average royalty per yeah. book sale yeah. is a dollar 12 per book. Peter yeah. had uh, a New York times bestselling author call him and say, man, you're making more money in royalties in your first month than I ever made from my New York Times bestselling book, like all this crazy stuff. So anyhow, that was validation. That was yeah. validation that uh, what we were doing was working from the book standpoint. But here's the best part of all of it. My struggling online business with the explosion and the email list and the credibility and everything went from earning $2,200 in nine months to earning over $106,000 in 30 days. Nice. All right. Same thing with Peter's business. His business wasn't struggling nearly as bad as mine was, but he went on to turn that book into literally probably 500 to a million or 500,000 to a million dollars. Because of course we're using this book and we're making some good money on the book, but the royalties are just pennies. The yeah. real money's in the back end, which we, I stumbled into this. Uh, I wish I could take credit for it, but this is what the big names have been doing for years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and leading towards a program. So we learned that the real money is in the back end. And that's when we started to tilt the business towards instead of just doing book launches, towards helping people use the book as the powerful tool that it is to really grow their brand and business. So fast forward to today, that was uh, just over two years ago. We've moved nearly 2 million books all throughout the world. But more importantly, we've helped people create businesses from scratch. We've helped people that uh, have uh, strong businesses get it to the next level. We've helped uh, hundreds of people become number one best-selling authors and whatnot through our training and, and uh, services and whatnot. So that's it. But the, the point of the story is the book if you use it right, is your secret growth tool. That's kind of the quote unquote easy button that so many people are, should be looking for because it gives you credibility. It gives you that traffic uh, point. It gives you that great trip wire. It gives you uh, partnership opportunities, a great media uh, uh, attention grabber and whatnot. So there's just so many great things about it that you can use as a tool to grow your brand and business. That's just amazing. <laughs> It's not happened on this show. I'm stuck to think, my God, where do I go from here? That's just that's you know that's obviously I I, I know you did the the launch with, with Peter. That's how we sort of first first met, yep. etc. And I guess that, I think that was probably his second launch, though, wasn't it? Not. not so his. so I, I think when you and I first connected, so we we started that book and got like just so much traction. I went to Peter and said, Hey, man, we've got to create a course out of this. So now we charge a thousand dollars for the course which just started, it is, it's, I would say 25% of it's from the book. So it's also called six months to six figures. So mm -hmm. then we built a course on the back end of this book. And that's literally uh, one of the programs that is going to be with seven figures for us this year. I talked about that failure or that, uh, that path. You have a failure, you rebuild, you success, 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 and then you're ultimately to seven figures. That's exactly what we did with that that program as well. So uh, the program came after we've had some momentum with the book. Yeah, that's brilliant. So clearly, though, it's not just a question of you know putting it in Create Space and sticking it on Kindle <laughs> and just pressing the button, is it? And you know, and getting and getting like Fiverr. Paying people on Fiverr just to go and post stuff in Facebook for you. So <laughs> there's, there's one guy that. Uh, that I think his company, and I, I may be bashing, I don't know this person, uh, but it's something like Publish and Get Rich or something like that. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the person, but that's not what it takes. It's not Publish and Get Rich from my experience. Yeah. There's a lot of small things that go into, uh, into uh, effect here, but ultimately what we're trying to do. Okay, as ever, I'm going to pull the curtain down at that point, and I'm sure you can already see, uh, you know, that this is this is going to be a great interview. But what we share afterwards, particularly in probably about the last twenty minutes of the interview, is absolute pure pure gold. 
what Austin, he breaks down and goes through an actual book launch and the things that you need to be doing. And there's a couple of real key things in there that even perhaps your entrepreneurs don't think about when launching a book, when they've written a book. And it's really, really great stuff. So if you want to check out that, I highly suggest that you, uh, somewhere near here, whether you're watching the, the video, there's probably going to be a link very near to join our Facebook group where you can hear the whole of that interview. But if you're listening to this on a podcast or you're, you're somewhere other than the site, if you go to the solopreneurshow.com forward slash Austin Netsley, you will be able to gain access to our Facebook group and hear the whole of that interview because what Austin shares is absolutely awesome. If you have a book inside of you or you uh, you know, you think that it's something, you, know, you may even have one, you may even have one on your desktop that you've never done anything with, what Austin shares is really going to help you to actually bring that book to life and bring it to market and make it a success. All right. So that said, it's the end of today's show. Really hope you're enjoying the shows. I certainly am. If you are, again, you know, wherever you listen to this, whether it be on the Facebook page, whether it be on YouTube or whether it be inside of the Solopreneur Show, please you know, put a comment, whether you do agree, whether you disagree, whether you like what I'm doing here, whether you don't like what I'm doing here. All constructive feedback is welcomed. And, uh, you know, let's get a little bit interactive here, guys. So, uh, you know, that said, it's the end of the show. I'm going off to have a cup of tea because you can probably hear my throat is going and uh, I think it's time to, uh, to pull the whole curtain down on today's show. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye now. To get your hands on more great business training and advice, plus the chance to join our free Facebook group where you will see extended guest interviews, the opportunity of free one-to-one -one coaching and behind-the-scenes access to Anthony, go to www.thesolopreneurshow.com and join us today.